Good morning. How's my Christmas family this morning? A little bit cool out there this morning. You know, I want to say welcome and Merry Christmas to all of you, even the ones that are watching at home tonight. I know, uh, I mean, today there's a lot of sickness. Uh, never thought I'd be so glad to see the flu come back, but, uh, you know, there is a lot of flu going through our system right now. So we miss y'all guys, and we'll have you in our prayers also. For many people, that is all they know about Christmas, what Linus just talked about. That's all they know about Christmas. Linus did get it right, though. He got it right that the true meaning of Christmas is until you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. He got it right. Luke chapter 2, verse 11, NIV says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This was presented in prophecy long before Jesus was ever born. So this is what Christmas is about. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. This morning, let's all look at the passage from Luke chapter 2, if you join me there. And as we look, let's try to envision and understand some of the incredible power and meaning in those words from the angels to the shepherds that very first Christmas morning. Join me in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Luke chapter 8, chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. You know, if you knew anything about the shepherds in their culture, and you've heard this from me and you've heard it from several others, they were generally considered a class of people who were as low a class as you could get. They were, were not the type of people that everybody hung around with. They had a bad reputation for a number of reasons. Some they deserved and some they didn't deserve. The nature of their jobs were to keep jobs kept them from observing the law strictly as some of the Jews did because they needed to watch their flocks seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and they were unable to keep the Sabbath. So they were considered that much worse because of that. They basically had a reputation as a class of people who were untrustworthy, couldn't be trusted. They were considered thieves. In fact, they were considered so unreliable that they were not allowed to be called as witnesses in the courts. So even in announcing the birth of Jesus Christ, God reaches out to outcasts and outsiders. That's amazing. These people didn't mean anything to most of the people around them, but Jesus Christ saw fit. And God saw fit to bring it to them first that we're going to have a Savior. The birth is coming. And one thing interesting about the shepherds that gets overlooked from time to time is they might have been called temple, temple shepherds because a commentary from the Torah says that all the animals to be used for sacrifice in the temple had to come from the area basically between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. All the animals. And that, that meant that there were many animals in that area. And there were many shepherds in that area. So there would have been flocks and flocks of sheep grazing this area, area specifically to be sold for sacrifice at the temple. Many sheep, many shepherds. So God had a plan. He knew what he was doing here. And think about it. Think about what that night was like for the shepherds. They're out in the field and an angel appears to them saying all this. How You know, they're considered nobodies. But here's an angel announcing the birth of the Savior to them right where they're at. Luke chapter 2, verse 9. You join me there. 
It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. What an announcement. I'm sure at first they didn't really know how to receive that. It, it would be a little scary. I would imagine if we were out camped out somewhere and an angel of the Lord showed up and started talking to us, well, we'd be a little bit, we'd be a little bit on edge there. What was the good news though? What were they saying? What was that going to, how was that going to bring great joy to everyone by what they were saying? Luke chapter 2, verse 11 again. Today in the town of David has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Why was this such good news? Because of who he is. He is the Savior of the world. Amen. At the time Christ was born, history tells us there was another person who was claiming to be the Savior of the world. It was the very man who had ordered the census that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, Seeger Augustus. He thought he was God. He thought he was the Savior of the world. There have been ruins found that refer to Caesar by the, by the title Savior of the world. Caesar was no Savior. He was only a man. The baby born that night that the angels announced his birth, Jesus is the savior of the world for everyone's intent and everyone's purpose to believe. And that phrase in Luke chapter 2, 11, is the high point of the entire message that was given at that time. The high point. This has been what God's been working on and working towards since, entered the, sin, since sin entered the world when Adam and Eve ate the fruit which caused all mankind to become separated from God without any hope. God's been working on this plan from that day forward. He had a plan to put in place for all of us. Isn't it amazing to think that God loves us that much? Can you have the, even the concept of what that love's like? When your children were born and you looked at their faces you look at your grandchildren, you look at them. Can you just imagine the love that we pour out on them and family and friends? Little bitty part. But if we think about it, God loves us all and he loves us all the same. And he cares so much about us that he'd give up that son that he sent to be born to die to cover those sins in our lives. Do we appreciate the gift? The gift of the birth of Christ? I think we take it lightly sometimes. And I think during the season, we get mixed up on what's important at Christmas. Throughout Scripture, God continues through his prophets to promise that he would send a Savior. And that's what the angels came to announce that night. The confirmation was when these shepherds watching sheep that they got to keep an eye on and we got to think about that. These sheep that are destined to be sacrificed in the temple to cover the sins of people, instead of watching the sheep all at once, they left. They left these sheep to go and worship the one who would one day give his life as the final sacrifice to take away the sin of the world. So something happened, right? That they all just packed up and said, hey, we don't need these. We need to go. We need to go see this thing that has been spoken to us and see this baby. So they left all those sheep right where they were. This isn't just good news. This is the greatest news the world could ever hope for. And they knew that. It's not enough for us just to hear it and know it. We must believe it and accept it. And accept it. His sacrifice for ourselves. He is the Savior and He is the Christ. What the shepherds did here is they did exactly what they should have. They heard it, they believed it, and they obeyed. 
and they went and visited Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. People think it is. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Often we hear the words Jesus Christ and we think of that as part of his name. Where Christ was a destination of who he was. His name was Jesus and he is Christ. So don't confuse the two. His last name's not Christ. He is the Christ. He is the Savior of the world. Jesus is able to take on the role of the Savior because... He is the one that God had authorized and empowered to carry out the work of salvation through him. But we think about this. Of everyone that he, he could have presented his son to that day, I mean, he could have came in with all this glory and all this, this fireworks and the whole deal, but God didn't send his son in the world that way. He sent his son into the world in a humble way. I think more so to get the attention of the elite. It ain't about y'all, right? It's not about who you are, your status, and your money. It's not about y'all. It's about simple people that understand what the Savior is about. Even the, the Pharisees and the leaders during that time, they were confused in their own things of what life was about. They looked down on the meek and the poverty they put themselves above all them, didn't consider them anything, just like they didn't in the shepherds, didn't consider them anything. I'm glad that God doesn't look at me that way. I'm glad that he cares enough about me and my place. He meets me right where I am, just as he meets all of us right where we're at, right at that time. It doesn't matter your status or who you are or what you have. It's where your heart is. That's what God cares about. Let's look at Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Why the shepherds? Luke chapter 4, 18 is Jesus reading a letter from Isaiah 61. And this is prophecy. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he had anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. From prophecy in the Bible, we are told that when the Messiah comes, he's not coming to the up-and-comers in the world. He's not coming to the influencers of the world. He's coming to the poor, the lowly, the meek, the afflicted, the brokenhearted, the captives, the prisoners. He's coming to the outcast. He came to touch the outcast and the low lives as they were considered. In fact, as Jesus went through life, we know according to the Bible, he attracted to himself the outcast of societies like the tax collectors and the absolute nobodies. He associated with drunkards and prostitutes and all types of sinners. He met them right where they were, no matter what was going on in their life, to give them hope, give them a new direction. We know this more so because the Jewish elite criticized him for it. They thought he was wrong. This filled prophecy, though, because it said that the Messiah would come to the poor and the outcasts. So Christ coming that way was to fill prophecy. The true meaning of Christmas was that the baby born over 2,000 years ago is the Savior of the world, the chosen one. He is God in flesh. How do we respond to this? How do we take all this in? How would we respond? That's the question this morning. I think we should respond just like the shepherds did in Luke chapter 2, verse 15, they believed and they obeyed. That's how we should respond. Real simple. Luke chapter 2, 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, 
which the Lord told us about. They believed what the angel said, and they obeyed and went and saw the baby. Maybe that's how we should respond. We should believe and obey. Uh, you may be thinking right here with everything shared so far this morning, where do we come in to being part of all this? How do we fit in to the Christmas story? We fit in in a big way, in a very big way. We find that in Luke chapter 2, verse 16, join me there. Let's read this together. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 16. Luke chapter 2, verse 16 says, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Think about that. These, these, these people that are considered outcasts, nobodies, they're saying these miraculous things. They're saying these things that are unbelievable. They're sharing birth of Jesus Christ with everyone. What's our part? That's it. No matter our status in society today, we are called to share the greatest story ever told to others so that they might also accept and believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's our role in all of this. Our role in all of this is to spread the word, the hope, and the love of Jesus Christ to everyone we come in contact with and not be ashamed to do it. Basically, our role is to spread the good news and really reveal it through our faithful words and actions while we're reflecting the light of Jesus Christ to everyone else. Today's Christmas. What a great day. What a great morning. I know. I've discussed this. People, there are people... Church is not having Christmas today. And I understand some of their reasonings because they explain it. You know, we don't know, according to the Bible, the exact day Jesus Christ was born. We do know for many years in culture throughout the world, it's celebrated on December 25th. Why would we fall into the pattern of wanting to celebrate it any other day. It doesn't matter to some people because they say, without a doubt, we don't know the day. But if this is our culture, this is what we believe, why would we change, try to change the narrative to fit the people? I have an issue with that. But everybody does their own thing and whatever they do is between them and God, not for me to judge. I'm just saying I believe this morning is probably one of the most important or is the most important day in all our lives that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. I pray that we all continue to reflect what this day means. I pray in the future that our world doesn't change where we slide further and further away from what Christmas is all about. Seems we get there every year. I did read a poll recently that said more people believed in the story of Jesus Christ than they did the story of Santa Claus. So we're on the right track, amen. If it takes the belief of Santa Claus to get a small child to believe in Jesus Christ, then I say, let's have Santa Claus, amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this day to you, Father. We're just so blessed and so thankful for the Lord for all you do for us, how much you care and love us. Father, this morning, we're thankful. We're thankful for you sending your son to be born and live a life and then die to cover the sins in our lives. Father, we thank you that you love us enough, that you care enough, Father, that you choose to hang out with us, 
that you choose to meet us right where we are, no matter where we are in society. Father, you choose to be right there with us. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, that you never forsake us and you never leave us. Father, I pray this morning, Father, that we will keep our focus on what the birth of Jesus Christ is all about. And that we won't be ashamed to say the word Jesus and share it with others. And share with others exactly what the birth of Christ means, means to us and what it should mean to them. Father, I pray today when everyone leaves that they once again focus on the priorities in their lives. Pay attention to the special things. Don't let things be overlooked. Don't harbor any kind of bitterness toward anyone. Today's the day of repairs. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to be here and worship to you. Father, I pray that everything we said and done this morning would be uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. And we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Good morning once again and Merry Christmas to all of you.